Well, it's that wonderful time again when we look at the latest and greatest that has come out of CIG and tear it apart. <laughs> um, the Nautilus, the mine lair, perfect for the lone wolf and seven of their friends. Um, <laughs> I have to say that, you know, when I saw this, when I originally saw this, when I was actually, you know, finished uploading the, you know, Friday's episode and all, you know, people were hitting me with this and I just went, oh God, oh no, <laughs> not again. And when I heard Mind Lair, I kind of went, oh shit, this, this could be a pretty bad thing. And so before kind of formulating my own opinion, I went out there and I dug around to see what people were saying about it. You know, I kind of wanted to get kind of a hot take on what people were thinking, what their initial reactions were, you know, just to kind of see what people were really thinking about this ship. And, you know, there were people going, oh, my God, people are going to lay mines everywhere. And, oh, I'm going to mine Grim Hex and that'll show those pirates, you know, haha, and all this sort of stuff. And I, and <laughs> other people are going, it's a good idea bringing a two-dimensional weapon into a three-dimensional game. Oh. And I just kind of went, yeah, you don't get it. Um, is it a good idea? Is it a bad idea? We're going to try to unpack a lot of this because this ship comes with an awful lot of baggage. Thank God it's got cargo. So let's get some of the obvious stuff out of the way real quick. Um... Oh my god, what a huge cash grab from CIG. They're hoping to rake in millions with the latest niche military vessel. No, and the truth is they're not. They may see some sales here and there, but the truth is most of these ships that exist in the persistent universe are going to be CCUs. It's going to be money that was already spent in some cases years and years ago that is simply going to be recycled into CIG's latest and greatest ship. Um, that's probably where a lot of the sales are going to come from. Now, are mines all of a sudden going to become the cancer of the universe, the bane of the universe? I doubt it. You know, there's probably some people out there who are harboring the belief. It's like, finally, now I can, you know, I can go and mine the entrance to Grim Hex and, you know, all those evil pirates won't, won't bother me anymore or things like that. Th these things, the mines aren't going to persist. There's no way the mines would persist beyond a certain amount of time after the ship leaves and probably only persist in that one specific layer or shard or instance, whatever you want to call it. They're not going to make a game where you can just infinitely unload these things into the universe and they persist until some poor hapless fool, you know, trips over one of them and detonates it. So that's not going to be a thing either. So the idea of creating an iconic minefield and that sort of thing, pipe dream, fantasy. But it is truthfully a niche military vessel, but it's an interesting niche military vessel because mine laying not so much of a skill shot but potentially it could be if let's say you were to lay a bunch of mines preemptively in an area where you knew someone was hunting for you and you were to create the idea that you were fleeing in a certain direction where it would be advantageous for them to pursue you through the minefield that they didn't know was there, that could create an interesting situation where an aggressor or the predator then becomes the prey. It's an interesting idea. Tactically, I like where this comes from. It rewards kind of forethought and it, and it rewards planning. And that's something that in a way kind of makes mines a bit of a skill shot even though they are kind of a random indiscriminate weapon if you use them right not so much it could be you know a very interesting way to play the game now the mines that they've given us are you know, there, there's a weird one in there um 
they have the traditional explosive tracking mine you know follows the ship proximity fuse detonates boom wow i mean no real surprise there um kind of a given and so cool great fine a basic mine but the next mine which is the gun mine i think that one had me scratching my head. I would have gone for like an EMP mine rather than a sentry mine. But, you know, to each his own. And of course, the Nemo drone, which allows you to retrieve mines. Possibly not only just yours, but those of others. So mines may be in limited quantity. They, you might use it to secure a location or protect a location with sentry mines, possibly. And then once you're done with that location, you go around, you scoop them all up and you go back. So it's not quite the indiscriminate, just lay a whole bunch of them and leave them type thing. It implies that possibly they're expensive. Possibly they're going to be not very cost effective when destroying things. So you may want to retrieve them after you're done with them, probably, especially those sentry mines. So it's, a, it's an interesting take on it. I was really kind of hoping to see, you know, an EMP mine there, but, you know, who knows what the future will hold. So the mines are generally pretty decent. Now, the idea that, you know, that they're going to be laid all over space and used to deny areas for you know for the foreseeable future to all non-friendly ships vehicles players whatever no i mean obviously with persistence being kind of a question mark at this point because i think it's obvious that there's going to be some kind of layering going on and there's gonna not just be one unified world server like you can't just say oh, i'm gonna put 50 mines here and now make that persist in every single instance of the universe because someone else could be traveling through that area and all of a sudden 50 mines wink into existence and kill them and the player who dropped them isn't even there how do you how do you make that make sense of that i don't know I mean, we're kind of delving into a topic that I kind of want to get a, a video out there to talk about, but I really, I'm not sure at this point, but I think that we're going to see a bit of a shift in the scope and the scale of Star Citizen in the not too distant future. But for right now, I don't think that it's going to become the terror of the game, but we'll have to wait and see what CIG does with the ship where they decide to take it now our minds going to become the new hot new weapon the primary weapon of the star citizen universe i don't think so like i said in the beginning like this thing is niche it isn't you know a one size fits all type ship it's far less uh god what would what would be a good word it's it's not as universally appliable to various combat situations as something like a Polaris or an Idris or a Javelin may be. This is something that is more kind of dialed into very specific purposes like denying an area or maybe creating an unwelcome surprise. So this is probably, of all the military vessels, this is probably something that would maybe see more use amongst the criminal element of the star citizen universe rather than you know the straight law-abiding element of the star citizen universe now that's not to say that the legitimate side wouldn't find a use for it because obviously if you're you know a little bit smart and a little bit cheeky you could create a situation where either NPCs or players may think that there's a ship in distress and they may decide to prey upon that ship only to find out that they've flown into the midst of a minefield. And that, in a way, is kind of what I like about it. You would think that an indiscriminate weapon like this, you know, just wouldn't be a skill shot. But in a way it is, but it's like a strategic skill shot. It's not so much just something that you have to kind of aim very carefully and then, you know, use, but if you use it correctly, it's very powerful. This is something that you kind of, it's more of a mental exercise. You have to kind of put it in the right place at the right time and you have to kind of create those conditions 
where you could lure somebody in to then use it so it's more of a it's not so much you know like a super powerful weapon in uh in a traditional fps game where it's really hard to aim but then if you hit them it's a kill shot this is more something where you're kind of using the circumstances of the game rather than an actual item to lure someone into a position of vulnerability and then using something as indiscriminate as a mine to then turn the situation over into your favor that's kind of what i like about it is it, it's something that requires thought and not so much being quick on the keyboard and quick on the joystick but some someone who's you know quick in the head and a little bit crafty and i like that i like games that kind of engage the mind on that level rather than the flat out i've got five guns you've got four guns aka i win you know i like that sort of thing i like that that kind of layered thought process to combat beyond just you know who's got the most megatons worth of warheads on their ship now as we were talking about on the last ship updates when we we're talking about newer ships coming out that they benefit from the lessons of the old ships you know the mistakes that were made with the old ships and certainly it appears that cig once again has you know learned some lessons from their older ships now unlike its size wise very close compatriot the hammerhead this ship actually has what you would see as a, a normal capital ship cockpit. You can see up, you can see around you. You know, one of the comical things about the hammerhead is the fact that the way the cockpit is underslung, almost like it's a zeppelin or something like that under the main body, is you can't see up. And many of the landing sites in the game have doors that open up above you. So you can't really see if those doors are open. It's like, can someone get in the top turret and just look up and see if the doors are open, see if I can fly up yet? Whereas this kind of takes that into account. As the newer ships come out, they kind of take the universe as it's being built, you know, as it's being built into account. And I like that. The interiors um, haven't really seen all that much of it. I've been looking for images that people have kind of pulled down of the interior of this ship. But in general, it seems to kind of follow the hammerhead vibe a little bit with the tubular passageways and all that. Hopefully, somebody at CIG, hint, hint, will remember to put in gun racks and a little place to store armor. Would be a good idea in a military ship. And don't give me any of oh, patrol ships don't have to carry weapons bullshit. You know it's horseshit, so that's a dumb argument. And so as long as something like that's included, you're already, you know, one step ahead of the game. And the fact that this thing ends up being a flat trade from a hammerhead, very tempting. Very, very tempting and very, very interesting. You know, and being a larger ship, it means you're going to be able to get around in the universe a lot more, a lot. It's going to be easier to get it around. You're not going to have to pay the the fuel tax and the time tax to get around like you would on smaller ships though I don't think this is going to end up being a particularly fast ship but it does have those vertical thrusters so you know you can use it on a planet too which is nice and I think it's also got cargo capacity you know um, you know, I know a lot of military vessels like the Valkyrie have recently been modified to include cargo capacity you're welcome and um, I'm glad to see that this thing is carrying a decent amount of cargo capacity as well. Now, when will we see it? And that this is kind of where we get into some complicated territory because, you know, they kind of hinted that it isn't being designed for Star Citizen alone. And I think that it's probably likely going to see an interesting role in Squadron 42, which means you're probably going to see this ship sooner rather than later when i kind of look at the production timeline of a lot of the ships that we've seen uh, over the last year i'm kind of i was a little bit surprised that this wasn't flight ready i got to admit i was kind of surprised that this wasn't flight ready obviously mines and that type of gameplay are something that's well off into the future 
but the basic ship itself. I'm kind of surprised that they didn't actually go all the way to flight ready with something like this. Is it something that we're likely to see in the next year? I would have to know more. I would have to dig in and I would have to nose around a little bit more to find out what's what. But my initial point of view, my initial take on this is that this is something that's going to be in Squadron 42. There's probably going to be like, oh, the Van Duel will only be able to come at us through, you know, this asteroid field. But what if we lay mines in the asteroid field? We'll have to get awfully close. Well, it sounds like a mission for you hotshot pilot and his assistant Steve old man Colton go get him you know that sort of thing I would like to say that this is probably something that's going to be flyable within a year year and a half if I were to guess and that is 100% a guess the unfortunate side of that is obviously that this pushed something else out of the way and that is the truth whenever you see like the Valkyrie, whenever you see anything that comes out flight ready, the arrow, that sort of thing, something got pushed out of the way in order for that ship to turn up in the universe. And there's a lot of ships that have been lingering in limbo for a long, long time. Sometimes there's somewhat reasonable justifications for it at other times they're not all that reasonable and while I welcome the idea and the the approach to this ship what it includes and what it can do you know there is a part of me that nags at me and says you know this is somebody's merchantman you know this is somebody's whole sea this is somebody's starliner star runner star lifter you know corsair <clears throat> mine um, and that, that is always kind of the, the downside to these ships, right? Is that when you see something like this, it, it's great to get excited about it and say, oh yeah, this is, this is going to be something that might be like, you know, the hammerhead sail. Uh, when we looked at the hammerhead and like, holy crap, that looks almost done. And the hammerhead turned up like a year later as a flyable ship in the game. And it's it's cool to get excited about that stuff, but there's still like there's you know these people who just kind of keep getting pushed out of the way and I think that that's kind of the blind spot for CIG's marketing is that they don't realize like the negative uh, the negativity that they that they sow with this sort of stuff, you know? I mean, I, I want to be more excited about this ship, but that is kind of the downside is because I, I do look at it and I see the other guy's Starlifter. I see the other guy's Merchantman and things like that. And that doesn't really make me feel all that good about this ship. I mean, that has to be said. It's the elephant in the room with all these new ship sales is like, you know, that's someone else's ship that's been perpetually stuck in limbo that's you know <laughs> i mean hell that's the cutlass red that's the cutlass blue where are they you know and then this thing turns up and it's like oh now we know if this is indeed something that's going to turn up in squadron 42 i mean it, it could in the end it could just be a background model right it, it could be just something to flesh out the human fleet and make it look you know much more populated but to me that kind of really doesn't make sense that it would just kind of be a dummy in the background i mean it if it was then why isn't it something that we've seen earlier if it was part of the original squadron 42 plan or the different iterations of the squadron 42 plan over the years why is it such a late entry why is it only turning up now you know it kind of feels to me like this was kind of uh you know, a late edition, something that someone said, oh, you know, it would be really cool if we did this. I mean, and if that's the case, then, I mean, that doesn't really shine too favorable a light on things. You know, it's just like, oh, no, let's, let's bring in another ship and let's do all kinds of different stuff. At this point, I think a lot of people would probably rather see Squadron 42 just finished. Just finish it and stop adding new shit to it, you know? 
I mean, remember, this is supposed to be Squadron 42 Chapter 1, you know, the first chapter of three. And here we are, almost eight years later, and it's still not done. And if this represents yet another delay to that project to include more cool stuff, then, you know, it really dampens the enthusiasm. You know, it, if 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 Star Citizen was a far more functional game and when a lot more of the ships were completed, then I would be more enthusiastic about something like this. But at the same time, you know, it's just... All these new ships that just keep turning up and turning up and turning up. And it's just like, but you haven't even really got your flight engine all dialed in yet. You know, just how far behind are you? You know, how long is this going to take? And I think that that's kind of the uncomfortable question that comes with something like this. So, I mean... From a gameplay perspective, from a pirate perspective, it seems like a very interesting ship with some definite possibilities, but what it represents for Star Citizen the game, I don't know that it's an, an, an entirely good thing. Thank you for watching. So, so, so if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in Star Citizen and Squadron 42's development, please follow us, please follow us, please follow us on our social media channels. See you soon.